Okay, now to have a look at a new part of functions. Um, and here I have a mapping diagram of a function. Okay, it turns 3 into 6, 6 into 12, negative 2 into negative 4, and so on. Okay, so this is a pretty standard function. Okay, I could even call it um, f of x equals 2 times x. Okay, I'm clearly multiplying my inputs by 2. Okay, and so I could say or y equals 2x if I call um, my inputs x and my outputs y. Now, what I want to do in this video is look at what function would be needed to actually turn, to go from that set of outputs back to the inputs. Okay, to turn 6 into 3, to turn 12 into 6, to turn 0 0.8 into 0.4. Um, well, uh, you could probably see that I would need to do x divided by 2. Okay, if, my, if I now call my outputs, well, I originally called my outputs x, um, I call my original inputs y now. Okay, so to go backwards, okay, to do the inverse, if you will, um, I'll do x divided by 2. Okay, and that is also what we'd call the inverse operation. Okay, times two divide by two. Okay, so that would that makes sense. Okay, if I initially had a function of uh, in x times two, to go back to go back where I started, I divide by two again. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward, and I have a notation for this. Okay, if my original function is f of x. Um, then this here, okay, sort of to the power of minus one, uh, although that is not what it means, okay, this means inverse function, okay, the inverse function of f is x divided by two, okay, that, that's the function that would turn the outputs back into inputs, okay, so that one was just quite obvious to spot. Okay, we could quite see, clearly see that to go from 6 to 3 and 12 to 6 and so on is just dividing by 2. Uh, what about some trickier functions, though? Um, for example, 2 times the natural log of x. Um, if I have a set of inputs and outputs there, okay, and I want to do the inverse, okay, the inverse function, and I have not done the notation correctly there. The inverse function would be e to the power of x over 2. That would be the exact inverse, okay? Whatever inputs went to outputs, the infinite set of pairs, um, I could go in the opposite direction with this function here. Or maybe a little bit more simple. Um, if I had just 5 times x, then subtract 1. Uh, well, if you can even think about the order of operations here. I would times 5, then minus 1. If I want to do everything in reverse, I would plus 1, and then divide it by 5. Uh, those are inverse operations. Okay, but uh, yeah, who's to say it wasn't this? How do I know? How do I know the orders? How do I know? What if it's a bit more complicated than these functions? Uh, there must be a process for finding what the inverse function is when it is not obvious. Okay, so um, it goes back to what we're doing here, where firstly my inputs were x, and then my outputs were y, and then I kind of switched it around. Okay. I want to turn y's back into x's. Okay, I want to switch x and y, essentially. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is make x the subject. Okay, um, by completely rearranging it, okay, um, you need to perform the uh, inverse operations, just like you do when you're solving an equation. Okay, so my first step would be to make x the subject. And I would move this 1 over, and then I would divide by 5. 
okay but this still describes the original function okay I've just rearranged it okay what I want to do is encapsulate this this thing I've got here um, into a new function but still a function of x so what I'm trying to say is that I'm going to switch x and y now okay I'm gonna have x plus 1 over 5 equals y um, although what would be even better uh, I had f of x equals 5x minus 1 uh, and now instead of saying y equals I'm going to say inverse function of f equals um, x plus 1 over 5 so all I've done here is I've made x the subject and simply switched x and y. Okay, and I've also written out the uh, the inverse notation properly. Okay, what about for this one here? Um, is that still possible? Well, I'm going to try and make x the subject again. Uh, I might start by dividing by two. I might I might write this log out in full just to remind myself that a natural log is log base e and then I can use my basic definition of logs to say this to the power of this equals this and I have made x the subject and now I'm going to switch x and y and this was a G, and so I need to use the proper notation and I have found the inverse function okay and the final thing you need to know about inverse functions is their graphs okay um, let's have a little look okay I've got one to six there you can assume that each notch is just one. Okay, and I'm going to graph the function and the inverse function. Uh, let's go with this linear one first. And, well, 5x minus 1 would look something like this here. Okay. Um, and, well, if you think about that, I switched x and y here when I was trying to find the inverse function, okay? And that is what I'm doing overall, that is, okay, I'm going from, I'm changing from going from inputs to outputs to now outputs to inputs, okay? I'm switching around x and y in, in every sense of the word, okay? So my inverse function, instead of having a y-intercept of minus 1, has an x-intercept of minus 1. Okay, instead of having a rise over a run of 5, a slope of 5, it's going to be 1 fifth. Okay, it's going to be the run over rise almost, uh, equaling 5 instead. Okay, I could even take any point I wanted, such as 1, 4 on the original uh, line. And that point should now be 4, 1, if I had done it correctly. Okay, so x-intercepts become y-intercepts. Uh, y-intercepts become x-intercepts. Okay, and you'll see in this next example, um, this applies to even more things than that. All right. Um, so the other example was uh, 2 times the natural log of x. And... Just to help you out, I will draw this as best as I can. That's not bad. Um, let's call that f of x equals 2 times natural log of x. Okay, I have a x-intercept there, a root. Um, I could also say uh, that I have e comma 2. And I could also say that I have a vertical asymptote 
at x equals 0. Okay, it will approach that, it will never reach it. Um, now, I may know how to graph e to the power of x over 2, but I could also use my knowledge of how inverse functions work. Okay, this x-intercept becomes a y-intercept. Um, e comma 2 becomes 2 comma e. Um, and the vertical asymptote even becomes a horizontal asymptote. Okay, and I can graph it. Instead of going off to the right, let's get this one's going to go up. And I've graphed my inverse function. Okay, so when we switch x and y in every way, um, what we're actually doing, or another way of thinking about it, is simply to reflect my original line in uh, in the line y equals x. Reflect my curve in this uh, mirror line here. Okay, and you can see that every point has been reflected. Okay, and every graph feature has been reflected. Every graph feature has switched x and y in some way. Okay, and once you know the graphs, okay, once you know how to find an inverse function, um, then that should be all for now.